So that's one of the things for the expansion of the universe. So that tells us then, okay, if everything is expanding, let's maybe go back to this original one. If everything is expanding, well, then that means we can sort of put the clock backwards and say, well, if it's expanding now, maybe that means it was smaller before. So if you keep going back, well, then that leads to a really weird conclusion, right? If you say, well, if it's expanding, then bring the clock backwards, it means everything had to be together at some point. So that brings us to this sort of singularity here. So the fact that the universe is currently expanding implies that perhaps it was, at some point in the past, infinitely small. Now that's really hard to wrap our little brains around, so that's why it's a, it's a tough one. But I mean, hey, the evidence really shows that. No matter what else, no matter what other model you have, you'd better be able to explain that the universe is expanding, or at least explain these red-shifted lines. Because when you look out at the spectrum of different galaxies, they are red-shifted. So again, this is strong evidence. So at least this leads to the conclusion that the universe is likely expanding. Okay. But we have another piece of evidence. This is actually called the Cosmic Microwave Background Radiation. Uh, some people call the CMB for short. Now this is really kind of interesting. Uh, so maybe I'll say so in theory. Um, but I mean, if the universe blew up, I mean, if there was some sort of the universe had a you know big bang you know if some sort of big explosion happened at some point that's sort of the big bang part of the universe theory here if the universe had a big bang which was hot it must be cooling now I mean explosions for example if you let them be they cool so the, it must be cooling now so the question is what should be its temperature? So what should be the temperature of the universe now? And through some really awesome uh, math, some scientists were actually able to calculate this and said, okay, well, the evidence shows that the universe seems to be about 13.7 billion years old. And if we assume it was, you know, this hot and all these conditions, and there's reasons for assuming those temperatures, um, then after this much time and with the size of it, that they predicted. So we predicted that, that the universe should now be at roughly three degrees Kelvin. That was sort of the prediction. So that was sort of one of the pieces of evidence here that this cosmic microwave background radiation, we thought then that the universe should now be at around three degrees Kelvin. That was in theory. Sort of, that was like uh, sort of idea A here. But what's really kind of funny is that what happened at the same time, there was uh, two scientists named Penzias and Wilson. Now what they were doing, um, they were actually using, uh, well they were trying to look at light in the microwave region. So Penzias and Wilson, they discovered, so uh, what they did is they discovered light in the microwave region. When we say microwave, we mean just that, that uh, light that has a wavelength roughly in micrometers, so something on the order of uh, 10 to the minus 3 meters or something like that. Uh, in other words, millimeters. So in other words, sort of lambda would be something like um, 0 0.001 meters, right? Because that is what one micrometer is. That's the symbol we use for this. So the wavelength is roughly 0 0.001 meters, something, something to that effect, at least. And the problem is this, though. This light was everywhere. See, these guys, what they were trying to do, they were trying to take some images of other stuff. I mean, imagine these guys have this fancy telescope, and they're pointing it up at the sky, and everywhere they look, they keep seeing this sort of persistent signal. So they were actually thinking, okay, maybe it's, I don't know, maybe it's something up in the sky, like above us. Maybe it's, I don't know, I mean, maybe it's like bird poop or something on the, on the telescope. So they actually sort of looked around and thought, well, if it's something in the sky, if we point the telescope somewhere slightly different, then we shouldn't see that signal. But it turned out no matter where they looked, okay, that's why it's in the background, no matter where they looked, this light was everywhere. 
Now, what's really interesting is that within um, within this sort of field here, if you're doing sort of microwave or even radar physics or people who are sort of radar engineers or things like that, we have a weird thing that we actually talk about uh, temperatures. We can actually talk about sort of a wavelength that's associated with the temperature. And so when they looked at this light that was everywhere, this light that they detected had a temperature roughly 3 degrees Kelvin. It was actually 2.7, I think, or 2.9, but it was very, very close. So sort of, this right here was in practice. So this right here was theory. This was sort of experiment here. So, and this was sort of by accident. I mean, these guys were sort of separately. They were just trying to do their own experiments and thought, ah, there's this annoying stuff that has roughly this wavelength, which is associated with roughly this overall temperature, that no matter where we look, we always see this stupid light. And what's really cool is that, look at this. This, what they found sort of by accident, sort of this, what was annoying to them, ended up really matching very, very well with a the theory that if you had a big explosion, what should the temperature be now? It should be this, roughly. So what's really beautiful, I think, is that these two things sort of separately ended up really uh, confirming each other. In other words, look, the thing that we actually see at 3 degrees Kelvin matches what should in theory be at 3 degrees Kelvin. So this, again, is a really good example of, well, if there was an explosion a long, long time ago, there should be some residual light left over, some residual heat. And that's uh, roughly 3 degrees Kelvin, which is not very hot at all. Now, of course, what's really awesome is that if you look at this, then the spectrum of the cosmic microwave background, I mean, here has really weird units. Uh, people who do lots of radar stuff, they talk about these in megajanskis per steradian, which is a really weird unit. But just think of this as how intense the signal is. And this is the wavelength here. So it has sort of a peak right here. So it goes sort of up and then down. It turns out this has an associated temperature of roughly this, for example. That's why I said it's roughly 3. I mean, it's 2.7, but... That's pretty close to three. This is what we actually observe. Now I'm going to show you a, a quick little t-shirt thing right here. This is actually something, it's maybe a little bit rude, but science, it works, bitches. But what this is, this is actually a t-shirt you can buy on thinkgeek.com, and it was actually drawn by um, uh, this guy who does this website, XKCD. So what he did is, uh, I mean, this is a little bit unclear, but he actually drew this. And what happened was, this signal right here that you see, it's hard to see the details that what they did is the theoretical signal should be like this and the actual signal when you do you know within the error bars you have these little uncertainty bars the real signal fits within the theoretical signal within the error bars completely so that tells us that theory uh, worked extremely well with practice in other words what we actually detect that was an extremely extremely good example of theory over here matching practice matching experiment so again that piece of evidence there which is really really strong plus the piece of evidence from the uh, everything being red shifted tells us that the universe then I mean those two pieces of evidence basically tell us that this really works best so any other theory you have of the universe had better explain those two pieces of evidence the cosmic microwave background radiation because that is there it's predicted and we see it you better be able to explain that, and the fact that everything seems to be expanding. So the Big Bang Theory does explain that. And okay, so the Big Bang Theory, it explains the expanding universe. Um, and also it explains this CMB. So it explains the, well, I mean, instead of saying expanding, I should say it explains the red-shifted signals here. So the red shift and the CMB, the cosmic microwave background radiation. So that is really cool. And furthermore, it really nicely explains the uh, Olber's paradox. Sort of it gives us a really good sort of solution to that. Right? Because what does it say? It says that the universe then is an expanding non-infinite universe. So that, at the same time, this is why I sort of chose to put it here, so non-infinite universe. So the Big Bang Theory really nicely, uh, on top of that, sort of goes back and explains and sort of solves Olber's paradox. So that's why I really like this Big Bang Theory, although I don't like it in theory, I sort of don't like the ideas behind it, just because it's, it's hard to understand. 
but the theory really does match very well with the experiments, in other words, with the evidence. So any other theory you come up with for the Big Bang, uh, instead of the Big Bang model, had better at least explain the expansion of the universe, because we see everything redshifted, and it had better explain the cosmic microwave background radiation. That's why, although maybe I don't like the Big Bang Theory, I certainly accept it, because the evidence is quite strong for it.